found this paper on Scrap and Create that is a Stamperia paper, and it's just 25 squares. And I thought it would be fun for an advent, but I wasn't with my grandchildren over the holiday, and we're celebrating in January. So I'm gonna make a scavenger hunt out of these boxes and hide treats in the boxes. Um, and it's two-sided. It's just sort of fun. It's got angels and Christmas cards and poinsettias and sort of quilted, quilted type um, icons. So I want to show you what I did with this or what I'm doing with this. So, so far I have two 9 by 12 pieces of mat board. And then I cut one. The thickness of my little boxes I'm making is about a half inch. I made this an inch and a quarter for a hinge and I'm going to put it together just like I do an album. So I take a piece of black construction tape. I'm using my Creative Spirit acid-free tape, which I love, making it a little bit longer than the piece. I am cutting the edges off to make it straight. And I'm laying it upside down. I already see um, a little bit of dry tape or dry glue on here, but that won't matter. It's so thin, you hardly see this tape when you get it made. Okay. So I'm laying this against a line, and I'm gonna go half on, half off. I'm using the smooth as my outside, the rough part as my inside. And I'm just laying one piece of the mat board on top. Then I'm putting my spine lined up on the bottom and lifting both up at top and folding it over. Now, I don't want the edges to go together because I'm gonna open this up and it's gonna leave a little space and that'll make it easier to have a nice hinge. lifting it up because um, the tape, the glue on my finger was a little thick. Okay, now I'm gonna just cover this gap with a piece of black construction tape. cover the gap. Now let's do that one more time. And I'll take a piece that's a little longer than the 12 inches. Laying it on along a line. This is crooked so I'm just straightening the tape. It's so sticky, it sticks to my fingers. Now this time, I can't get it off my fingers. There we go. Rough, rough. I'm laying it on top of my spine and placing it half on, half off. Standing it up, folding it over, using my table service as my folding agent, opening it up. And putting the tape over. Now this will make a nice hinge 
for this little game board I'm making. It's sort of like an advent, but advent is over, but our celebrations aren't. Okay. I now have my base. And what I did was I made these little pizza boxes. I did this on Cricut. I bought it, the pattern, the SVG on Etsy. And I made this cute little pizza box. And I'm going to attach them to this board. And I have a couple of pieces of double-sided tape. It doesn't have to be a lot. It's just a decoration. And let's see, make sure I got the right direction. I'm just gonna place that on the top of the pizza box. So I call it a pizza box, but it's actually gonna be a candy box. So that's how I make my boxes. And on the back of the craft cardstock paper, I have um, more double-sided tape, and I think I'm going to use some tacky glue, too, to make sure they stand on well. So I have 12 here. I only have 10 grandchildren, but I'm going to do the whole 25. Um, I just don't know if it'll be all right now, and we'll see how fast it goes. <laughs> so I have put the double-sided tape on the boxes and I'm not even going to mark where they are I'm just going to try to line it up and because of that I'm going to put tacky glue on top of my double-sided tape and that will help give me some movability and I'm just going to line this up about a quarter inch in from the edge. And if you want, you can lift up the cover and push down. I think this will fit. four rows of three. Now, I've never made an advent this way, but I thought it would make a colorful game for our January Christmas coming up. I think, and I'm also going to put number three down before two and then just center that one. So we'll leave two out there. And this is my edge and I'm going a quarter inch in like I did the other one. I think that'll work. There we go. Okay. You know, I went that, I forgot the quarter inch at the top, so. This, this glue will dry Clear. So even though I put that in the wrong place, it was easy to move, and I can rub that glue off. There we go. 
So I'm going to do the bottom. Now you could have these, if you were doing an advent, you didn't wouldn't have to keep these in order. I'm going to just line them up sequentially. I know a lot of people do what they call daily books in December. And these little squares from Stamperia would be great for a daily book too. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm only going to have 24 room. So I'm thinking of putting number 25 on a bigger pizza box on the cover. So this is just a little bit of the steps. Because I have the liquid adhesive, I don't even think I have to open these up. I think the liquid sticks right away to hold them in place. Liquid or tacky. I guess it would be tacky in this case. Okay. I think what I'll do is try to get one whole side done and then show you the finished product with a photo. So I am just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. these little pizza boxes would be cute holders for things like earrings or other little gifts or tokens too. Now, my grandchildren range in age from 1 to 15, <laughs> and because of that, I, I decided to put candy in the boxes rather than try to have individual gifts. They're going to be looking on a scavenger hunt for very specific things, but I'll share that after our January 15th party because I don't want them to know what's in, just in case they happen to see this video. <laughs> I don't want them to find out what they're searching for in the scavenger hunt. I will give a clue though. It's something to do with our 50th anniversary, which is coming up very rapidly. Okay, last two. I think the hardest part is getting the double-sided tape cover off or liner or whatever you call it. Okay, I now have 11. And one more box, one more pizza box to add.
There we go. I'm going to just lay that on here for a minute. We ended at 12. So I'll line these ones up. It will help me as I place the next rows. Missing number 19. Where is 19 hiding? Well, that one must be falling to the floor. So another reason to just do one side for now. But this will give you the idea of what it would be like. I'll stick 25 there <laughs> for the moment. So these are all attached. And when they're nice and dry, then I'm going to add the candy. And not only was it Christmas, but it was Hanukkah. So I bought Hanukkah coins. I thought they would look like little pieces. Because I want this to be like a book, I will probably put some adhesive just to hold it in place. But it's like a mini pizza. And I think I will use um, sort of a gummy tape so it can pull off. But that's where the candy is going to go. Do want that this to be secure so I won't put it in yet. But when it's done, and I fold the book closed, I can then decorate the cover. And this bigger pizza box I made, I think is going to go on the cover, even though it'll be sticking out a little bit. So I will, and I'll put number 25 on that. So that's my idea for a scavenger hunt. And let's see, let's just take these off. It could be stored for next year if we want, because it'll be like a book. So it could go right in with Christmas decorations. So I hope you like my fun little project for my grandkids. Um, I think it'll be uh, at the beginning of clues for a scavenger hunt. Meanwhile, have a great New Year's and think of fun things you can do with leftover Christmas paper. Have a great day. God bless. Oh, and Happy New Year.